Thanks, Helen. Yeah, so um, uh, Cloud Compare is a package that visualizes um, point cloud data and mesh data, um, and it's open source. It was actually developed. Um, oh, I'm not moving on. Why is my thing not moving on? It was developed by the French nuclear industry a number of years ago, uh, but um, the guy who did all the software development. Um, left that industry and asked as he left whether they could um, make the internal developments uh, publicly available, um, seeing as there'd be no one left to maintain it, and they agreed. Um, the, the, the package has developers material. You can see down here, this is the landing page for the Cloud Compare, and it's got um, a developers material that's available. And interestingly for the geosciences, they seem to attend the annual virtual geoscience conference every year. So even though it's a, a open source code that it is far broader than, than the geosciences, they certainly have a strong connection to the geosciences. And I'll come back to the developers material in a second because we've done some development for it. Uh, so as I mentioned already, a typical data that goes into Cloud Compare is, is things like point clouds from photogrammetry or from LiDAR but you can put meshes in there. And I got involved in, in Cloud Compare um, because I'm interested in using drones and sensing the landscape uh, as a mapping tool for geoscientists. And so this is how we first got connected to the package. Um, so here's an example of an open pit where we flew a, 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 a drone survey and generated a point cloud. And that's a very photorealistic model, but as you zoom in, zoom in, you can see that it's actually composed of um, lots of tiny little points, which each have a, a normal, an orientation to them. Um, and even without the geological tools um, specifically developed for it, which we did, it's still very, very powerful. You can, you can take um, a point cloud like that, which is many millions of points, and you can begin to um, play with the, the color spaces uh, to draw out different features in the model. And so I'm just running through now in real time um, some calculations that you can run on that, on that particular model. Here we're looking at, we're converting from the RGB to a hue saturation value. And again, you can see, depending on the lighting direction and the color, the color space, uh, different features emerging from that landscape, slumps in the walls, uh, normal faults that are developing where the, where the the wall of that open pit is collapsing. And you can go one step further from there, and you can actually begin to look at things like uh, curvature or a gradient in the surface. So you can map out, um, uh, again, different features from looking at the curvature. You can see just appearing in the top right, there's clearly a, a normal fault network that's related to the collapse of this wall into the open pit. Um, and you can also look at um, things that geologists really understand, like dip orientation and strike orientation and color the point cloud by um, that information. This video is going to keep playing. I can't seem to interact with my screen once it's playing on Zoom very easily. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to now zoom into a section of, of the um, point cloud. And we're going to extract this corner of the, of the cloud, this top right hand corner, and very, very quickly isolate the fault surfaces that you can see in there. So I'm just um, clipping out a section of the code. Oh, it seems to have stopped. No, there we go. Clipping out a section of the code, uh, of, the, uh, of the cloud. And we'll go from there to um, isolate uh, the different scalar fields that are that are contained in that cloud data. And then again, you can extract the actual fault surfaces very, very quickly. So here we are, we're looking at the, um, I think that's the strike orientations of the dip range. And then very rapidly, you can extract out the, the fault surfaces from it. Okay, so when we um, uh, it began to work with Cloud Compare, 
and the options to develop Python code and actually build your own tools in there. We um, rapidly built um, a plugin called Compass, which is really a, a, a geological mapping tool. And it's based on least cost path solvers. So this, this tool allows you to map out fracture surfaces, stratigraphy, intrusive boundaries, faults, cleavage, anything you want that has an expression in the, in the point clouds that you generate. And then for then the second step, Sam Thiel, who was my student at the time, used a Bayesian approach to actually quantify the uncertainty on the measurements. And here is just a, an example of uh, the, the wiki, the Compass wiki that's available on, on, um, on, on the internet for you to go and, and learn and see what aspects of the tool are available. But there's things like a compass mode, which is really like a geology, a very clear geological approach to, to the data. So you can literally walk into your point cloud and put down the compass, just like you would do in the field and measure surfaces. But then you have um, mapping and tracing tools where you can click on one end of a feature and on the other end, and it will automatically link along the feature and then it will extract orientations for you. And, and you'll see in this video that Sam used that in, um, in uh, a volcanic caldera. He's mapped out these dike boundaries uh, against all the pyroclastic flows. He's measured their orientations at five centimeter intervals over 15 kilometer lengths. And he's then begun to um, filter them out, filter the orientation measurements out uh, for the ones that are poor quality, and then measure the thickness between boundaries. And so in this video, he just very quickly runs through an extraction of that data set and turned that into the stereo net depiction. You can see that there's multiple populations in the dike orientations. Sam was able to fly, I think, four or five surveys through the caldera of this volcano. It's Taburenti volcano from La Palma. And he was able to map over just a, a few weeks, 15 kilometers of dike surface, at five to ten, ten centimeters spatial resolution, and extract 50,000 orientation and thickness measurements. So you can imagine um, the application of this to say an open pit mine site, the level of geotechnical information you can extract uh, using this tool, or similarly from LIDAR scans underground. Um, yeah, very, very powerful. That's it. I think I'm well in, well within time, which is unusual for me. So any questions? You've got minutes to spare. <laughs> any questions for Steve? I can think of so many applications for, uh, for that work, Steve. <laughs> so. Yeah, I should have put the digital earth thing in there as well, but um, didn't think I'd have time. When Max brought up point clouds, I was going to throw to you and, and uh, see if you wanted to say anything about the uses there or the work, any of the work that you guys are doing. Uh, well, I, I guess the, the thing to say is that the natural extension of Cloud Compare has, has been working with a software company here in, in Brisbane, funded gratefully, Helen, to, from, from, the, from the geological survey. And uh, that's able to visualize a near infinite amount of spatial information. So Max, we'd be super interested in, um, in visualizing the, the joint inversion data that you generated from Ernest Henry. And that's an environment where you can compare the joint inversion with the geological information and really begin to get insights as to what these resistive and density features mean. Yeah, I think that would be very interesting. I think uh, there's certainly scope for some more detailed comparisons. Yeah, great. <laughs> uh, question from Richard Blewett. Steve, could you apply this mapping and visualization tool to a 3D environment? To a 3D seismic cube. 3D seismic cube. Sorry, I didn't read the whole thing. Yeah, or the triple inversion. Um, if you can turn it into a point cloud, and get it into Cloud Compare, you possibly could. Um, we've also, so in terms of mapping, the tools are in Cloud Compare. In terms of visualization, uh, 3D seismic cubes are obviously very large, um, large amount of data. And, but we have just developed automatic pipelines for getting 3D data into, into that bigger visualization model I just mentioned, the what we're calling the, the 
geological digital twin of Northwest Queensland. Um, so uh, what I would say, Richard, is the one limitation with Cloud Compare is it's hardware um, constrained. And it, I don't think it has been paralyzed yet. Um, so it will fall over when you have really large data sets. Um, Actually, it's paralyzed often. Is it? I'm not parallelized, it's paralyzed. Often. Oh, paralyzed, yeah, sorry, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, so then it comes down to a matter of how, how powerful your hardware specs are, how good your hardware specs are. 